Hi, I'm so glad you're here for another Mechanism Monday. In last week's video, I asked if you could come up with a mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, give it a shot now and see what you come up with. And make sure you stick around to the end because I have another mechanism for you to solve for next week's video. This mechanism relies on your knowledge of forming enols and enolates and the types of reactions that can happen at alpha carbons. I actually have a set of videos where you can find out more information about many of the reactions that we'll talk about in this video. So make sure to check it out if you have any questions. Due to the presence of these esters, this presents a position at which is called the alpha carbon, which is going to have more acidic protons than you typically see on carbon and hydrogen. We call them the alpha position car carbon hydrogens, and they are susceptible to being deprotonated by bases like sodium ethoxide. So remember that these ions separate into their component ions, which means this can act as a base and come and deprotonate one of these protons, which will move the electrons down here and kick up these pi electrons up here, forming our enolate. That enolate is going to still contain this four-membered ring. We still have our other ester on this side, and now we have formed our enolate species, which has a negatively charged oxygen and an alkene adjacent to that. And remember, our ethoxide portion of our previous ester is still present. From here is where the magic happens, where these electrons can actually come back down and this is going to make the nucleophilic position be this original alpha carbon. Because now these pi electrons can come over and attack this electrophilic carbon. Or in fact, what they're actually going to do is move over to this side to relieve some of this strong ring strain in this four member ring, which is then going to move these electrons to this position, and now it's gonna kick up these electrons to this oxygen, kind of in a cascade of movements of electrons. And this is going to serve to open this four-membered ring and giving us our next intermediate. Sometimes this is what's known as a retro Michael addition. So a retro Michael addition. And this is going to give us a product where we have now reformed this ester so this ester looks like this. We've now made a new carbon-carbon double bond adjacent to that. And this is going to be attached to the carbon with the two methyl groups on it. And then two other carbons where we begin our double bond, which is formed at these two positions, which is now our new enolate. So our new enolate looks like this. And I think it's important to make sure that we can figure out where those carbons are. So I can go through and recount these carbons and name them like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and locate them on our new intermediate. And notice that this is now position one was this carbon. That makes this two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think this makes seeing the transformation a little bit easier if you can identify where the new carbons are. So notice that between two and three is where this new pi bond has moved. And notice that at position two and three is the location of that pi bond. Similarly, between six and seven is the formation of our enolate. And notice between six and seven, we are moving electrons to that position and kicking up these pi electrons to oxygen. So now notice that if it was difficult for you to see that transformation, that sometimes just counting the carbons can help alleviate that Concern. And then from here, what happens is actually called another named reaction, and it's called a Dieckmann cyclization. So what will happen is these electrons will come back down, reforming our ester, and this position, this bond right here, now will do a nucleophilic attack at this carbonyl carbon. And notice that this is what is going to allow our ring to actually form our six-membered ring. And because we're attaching from this alpha carbon position at position six to position one, and that means that we have six carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six will form our six-membered ring. So then the product of that reaction is going to be a six-membered ring. And coming off of that six-membered ring, we have our new ester, which has been reformed. So that is the ester that was from this side of the molecule. And if this was position six, then we can say that, okay, if this is position six, then this must have been position one, position two, and position three. And remember between two and three, there was a pi bond, which is still intact. And then four and five is where we can find our two methyl groups at position four. So that means there's a methyl group here and a methyl group here. Additionally, at position one, we see that is where we have now formed our negatively charged oxygen. And in addition to that, our OET, which is still present. So notice that keeping count of the carbons helps us see the transformations as we're drawing our mechanism. At this stage, this negatively charged oxygen has electrons which can come down, and this is actually what's going to serve to make our ethoxide leave. And notice that that is going to give us partially this position here in our final product. Therefore, what's formed 
at that stage is going to be most of our final product. However, we're missing one key ingredient, and that's going to be this second pi bond. Everything else, though, looks mostly like what it's supposed to in our final product, except for the fact that now we have this carbonyl oxygen at this position, and we don't, we're still missing this second pi bond. Now, in the video that I have about clays and condensations, where we cover some of this chemistry, when we talk about a clays and condensation, the driving force for that is the fact that the next step that occurs is actually gonna be kinetically incredibly fast, and it's gonna be what drives this reaction forward. And notice, since we have these two diketo species, this is going to make this alpha carbon, which is alpha to both of these carbonyl groups, incredibly acidic. And remember that in this step, we generated ethoxide, so OET minus was kicked off at this stage, which is a very good base. And what can happen is now that base can come in and deprotonate this very acidic proton. And once it deprotonates this proton, this is going to move the electrons to form our new pi bond at this location, which we will have to move these pi electrons back to oxygen to make sure that there aren't five bonds to carbon. And this is actually going to be what the step that gives us our final product. The equilibrium constant that we would expect from this is going to be so incredibly high that it actually is what drives this forward reaction and what keeps it from going backwards in this direction. Because remember, even though I'm drawing each of these arrows as single lines, in truth, most of these chemical reactions are reversible and in equilibrium with each other. However, because this is such a favored reaction energetically, this is going to be what drives the formation of the final product. I'd love to hear how you did in a comment down below. Additionally, for next week, I'd like you to see if you can come up with a plausible mechanism for this chemical transformation. Either remix this video with your own, or leave the individual steps as a comment down below. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.